Welcome back to The Problem With Series, and you knew this was coming, folks! It's time to talk about The Flash TV Show. That's right, The Flash TV Show has come to its ending, and while I have watched it off and on, generally I have watched it for nine years. So what are my thoughts on The Flash finale, combined with my thoughts of the show as a whole, and where I feel the problem really started to present itself? And we're gonna talk about that, but today's sponsor is Gamersubs. Use the code COMICS down below to get 10% off of your order of some amazing energy drink powder. I'm currently drinking their brand new lemonade. You should check it out yourself. Also, look, they're not knocked over. The cat hasn't attacked them yet. Waifu cups, they come out. You can check back just about every Friday. There's some kind of new cup, at least once a month, sometimes every week. Check those out, 10% off of your order. All right, let's talk about The Flash show. No, wait, before we do this, I have to resolve something with the audience right now. Now, Dan's editing this, and Dan's going to put a picture of himself up right now, and I need you all to help me decide definitively, does he or does he not look like our own personal Grant Gustin? Are you not waiting for Dan to break out into a song and dance at any point because he looks like Grant Gustin? It needs to be decided by you, the chat, in the comments down below. Now let's talk about the Flash finale. So we're going to start with the Flash finale itself, and then I'm going to talk into the series as a whole and my overall opinions with it. Now, the Flash finale is broken up into four episodes. I watched the Red Death arc, and then I kind of fell off the series after the terrible Red Death arc, and then I came back for this actual finale. Now, I thought that the Ollie stuff was going to be in this, but apparently it was the episode before. Ah. Uh, Sucks to be me. I'll watch it another time. Maybe I'll talk about it on our podcast channel. Absolutely. Now, episode one of this opens up with the Flash being sucked back in time. Awesome. Time travel gets wrapped into it. He doesn't know what's going on. I loved the appearance of Thawne showing up and Thawne not going on. The realization that he was in the beginning of the story. He was the Flash that went back in time and altered everything and stopped everyone. I love how it all came together. It was Flash nonsense. It was great. And it was about Barry. It was about Fawn. And it was about his family and the Speed Force. It felt like classic true to form Flash. Loved it. Then episode two happened. Because if you were wondering what happened to the side cast of Cecile and Allegra and Chester and Iris and not Joe, because Joe's not here. He was in the last episode in the past. Why would we care about Joe? Oh, and do you care about Mark and Keon? Because I don't. But yeah, if you cared about all those characters, let's go to episode two, finding out what they were doing when Barry was removed. And you know what we should really focus on? Keon. Because Keon has turned into a goddamn goddess. She can literally turn people into plant people and kill people and revive them from the dead. That's not overpowered. We, uh, we don't need to deal with that. Now, if your follow-up question is, who the hell is Keon? <laughs> let, me, let me go. To, so back at the beginning of season nine, um, Caitlin in Killer Frost, you know, the whole thing we've been doing for eight seasons. Well, they're gone. They're gone now. Caitlin and Killer Frost are both dead. Instead, we have Keon who I think is the stupidest concept for a character, worse, worse than Allegra. There are positives. I'm not only going to complain, but Keon's a character that got introduced at the beginning of season nine, knowing it was our last season. And yes, yes, all of you people who are going to want to complain, I have seen the interviews with Eric Wallace, the showrunner, who said, well, Keon was intended to be a two-season arc. Cool. Once you found out you didn't have those two seasons, why does Keon exist? So Keon is the combination, a new character, not Caitlyn, not Killer Frost, a brand new character who we need to deal with her ascension into godhood. Why? Who? Who cares? Why? But yes, episode two is about them. Allegra, the other character. Now, I did a Google search on Allegra. I literally searched Allegra fans. And then I looked Allegra positive performance. And then I looked... Like, everything you can think of to find Allegra fans. Because I was like, look, me and my group, we don't like Allegra. We found her to be just tacked on for no reason. An, un an unneeded metahuman for nothing. Because they wanted to tell more stories that weren't Barry. And I don't know why that was a thing. But we'll talk about that after I get through the episodes. I couldn't find anyone that seems to care about Allegra. So I actually, this is an honest question. Because I assume she stayed on the show because there are fans. It's like, if you talk to our little wheelhouse, everyone just craps all over Iris. But I found positive notes in iris and there and, and candace patton's performance in iris and there is a bunch of fans for candace patton and iris 
So that makes sense that she stayed, but I couldn't find them for Allegra. So if you know people that liked Allegra or you are one of those fans, just know I just felt that she was underutilized, just like Iris. And I would love to know if you liked Allegra. Anyway, episode two doesn't really matter because it's all about what these people are doing while Barry is ripped out of time. And just, I found it so boring. I wrote notes here on my Twitter, which by the way is at Comic Storian, um, that the episode is all about Keon, and why is that in the Flash of season finale? It should have been Iris, it should have been Cisco, it should have been Caitlin, it should have been Joe, any core cast member. Because what the episode was primarily about was Mark and Keon. And why? I think Mark showed up in season eight, maybe seven, but became a regular in eight. But either way, he hasn't been around super long. He's a newer cast member. And Keon's a brand new creation. I get that it's Daniel Panabaker who was playing Keon, but I wanted Caitlin or Killer Frost. Those are the characters that you have established for eight seasons, not some brand new character. Anyway, episode three went back to what we should have been doing. The through line through all of these episodes that was connecting them is something is removing Barry out of the time and space con continuum or whatever it is. And at the time, same thing, Eddie Thon, Eddie from season one was back to life and had different memories and we didn't know why. Well, see, episode three builds up on that. It shows us how Eddie came back, how he started his life up, and his journey to figure out who he is and what is going on. And that was interesting because it felt like a true finale situation. We're building up this brand new big bad, and the big bad is tied to the one plot hole from season one that everyone wondered how the hell it worked out. If you don't remember, and this is important to the finale... At the end of season one, the way they defeated Eobard Thawne is Eddie Thawne shot himself in the chest. He killed himself removing Eobard Thawne from the timeline because that timeline never existed. Eobard shows back up later, usual bull crap of, well, I'm a time paradox and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, this left the thing of Eddie Thawne killed himself and then Barry Allen took his girlfriend slash fiance, who was Iris at the time, married her and took Eddie's life, basically. And when you think about it like that, it's like, holy crap, that's terrible. Because that's literally what Barry did. And trust me, the show tells you that's what he did. Eddie's like, you took my life. That was my fiance. That was the life I was going to have. And I killed myself to save you. And in return, no one has mentioned me. And I'm like, holy crap. Other than the occasional fan debate of like what happened with the Eddie Thon thing, no one, none of us have brought up Eddie Thon. This is all tied to the negative speed force. The negative speed force, which was defeated in season eight as Eobar Thon was the avatar, has decided to come back using cobalt like uh, ore. Okay, and he basically what happens is Eddie Thon becomes Cobalt Blue. If you don't know who Cobalt Blue is, he's an obscure character from the 80s and 90s that everyone who knows who he is really loves to tell you about because, oh my God, I'm the coolest guy ever who knows everything about the Flash. Yes, I know. Everyone who hit me up. Cobalt Blue is nobody. He's a nobody. I'm the one telling you right now. If you think you're super cool because you know who Cobalt Blue is, Cobalt Blue is basically Barry Allen's evil twin from the 90s. And maybe it was cool back then, but he hasn't shown up. You know what? To see if I'm right or wrong, let's, go, let's Google Cobalt Blue. Has he shown up and Benny just completely missed him? Let's find out. Nope. Wait, that was his first appearance. It was 1997. And his last appearance was 1999. <laughs> the point i'm getting at is cobalt blue is a cool idea cool concept it's cool if you know the information on him but for like five seasons of this show random people have been hitting me up and they're like oh my god benny they're bringing back cobalt blue and i'm like i think you're 16 and i don't, I don't think you know who that is <laughs> But everyone acted like it was some big reveal that we were getting Cobalt Blue. Anyway, Cobalt Blue does finally show up, pandering to the fan services of everybody wanting Cobalt Blue. And I will admit, this is a really cool way to use Cobalt Blue and bring him back. Not just make him another evil berry because that's Savitar. So Cobalt Blue is Eddie Thon, and he is going to take the life that he has deserved back from Barry. And on top of that, since he's the negative Speed Force avatar... And to fight Team Flash, he brings out of time Godspeed, Eobard Thawne, Hunter Zolomon, and Savitar to join his team. And they do not get along at all, which I thought was great. 
because that's how it should be. They shouldn't all show up and be like, like one guy's like, I'm the god of speed. And Eobard shouldn't be like, well, god of speed, we should team up and take out Barry. You know, all of them were full of themselves, wanting to fight each other, but it was Cobalt Blue who brought them back together. And I liked that. That was cool. It was a lot of fun. That leads to the team fighting against Cobalt Blue and all of the Avatar, all the individuals. On one hand, I kind of wish Barry had fought against Eobard Thawd one more time. It's fine that he didn't, though, because that's like the plot to every season for the last four seasons. But it would have been cool to have the finale at least have a interaction between the two of them that mattered. Because it really, they really didn't have much between them. And I get it. We had to work on Cobalt Blue. He's the big bad of this little portion of the arc. Uh, slight editor's note here. Uh, Cobalt Blue does make a brief appearance in 2005 when all of Iron Heights breaks out and fights against them. So just for those of you who are going to go down below and be like, no, Benny, he showed up as a background character when the rogues went crazy. You are correct. I'm sorry. Anyway, moving on. At the anyway, it all comes down to big battles between the Speed Force users and the Team Flash, and I thought that was a lot of fun. It was a good, a good ending to the whole thing. Uh, across the board, these four episodes, none of the dialogue really felt like CW cringe. I'm sure, I'm sure, a bunch of you are going to go down below and be like, no, Benny, this scene that happened at 36 minutes into episode two, oh, uh, stop me, made me stop. I get it. You're all going to find some scene in my opinion, I didn't find any of it to be over the top, overbearing, or anything like that. Um, it ends with Barry deciding to just stop fighting Cobalt Blue. The whole thing is, why don't we try something new? You, this battle's going to never end. Instead, I don't fight you, you don't fight me, and that's that. And I know some people didn't like that ending, but I really did like that ending. Because every superhero fight ends with a fight. This didn't end with a fight. This ended with Barry talking to Cobalt Blue and it brought it to its conclusion. And if you're wondering, that did happen multiple times in the comics, but the most recent one was the end of Joshua Williamson's run where Eobard Thawne was going to mess with him again. And instead, Barry's like, no, I forgive you. This is all over. I'm now, in the comic, he took away Eobard's memories at the same time so he couldn't become a villain anymore, but you get the point. There was no fight. They, they talked it out at the ending. So overall, I liked this. My complaint, actually, is that Iris didn't really get a send-off. Uh, her send-off is that she's pregnant now. Congratulations. Nine years in, you're pregnant. You're pregnant with Nora. We're going that route. Okay. Uh, it wasn't a terrible send-off. I know a lot of women dream for that. Like, the, you know, I want to get pregnant. And I want to have a family. And that's kind of what they were going for with the finale for Iris. But I felt like after everything that's going on, we should have gotten more to her newspaper business and everything. Like... The conclusion to that was an offhanded mention of she won a Pulitzer Prize. Congratulations. So I guess she did get the closure, but it just felt like we didn't lean into it too heavily at all. After everything we built up to with Iris, we didn't get much. Iris was, you won the Pulitzer Prize, and here's the baby. All right, back to Barry. Like, that's kind of how they handled the Iris thing, in my opinion. Um, for the... One Allegra fan out there. Uh, she finally kissed Chester. Now, I was unaware that we had been teasing it this whole time. I thought it finally happened. But I forgot that it did happen, and then the timeline reverted, and we pretended it didn't happen. I forgot that was a plot point. So, yes, it finally happened. They got together. Cobalt Blue is off doing evil villain stuff. Uh, they ended with the uh, introduction of three new speedsters. I don't know what CW was doing. The idea was that Barry's tired of being the only speedster. He's going to spread it all out. Max Mercury is a classic character from classic DC. Jess Chambers is the non-binary character that was introduced two years ago. And uh, Avery Ho is the Chinese Flash when they made a Chinese Justice League, who since that has kind of disbanded, has now ended up as a member of the Flash family. She may or may not still be dating Wallace. I'm not quite sure on that, but that those are what those characters are. Uh, the show came to a good conclusion. I enjoyed it. It was, after all of this, everything we've been through, it just, they threw everything out, and honestly, you don't have to watch anything else. You can watch these four episodes, and anything that doesn't, uh, other than new cast members you might not recognize, it really does, for three episodes, focus on Barry. Like, Allegra, Chester, uh, Cecile, they all get scenes. They all get stuff going on. Joe gets uh, a, a scene in the beginning, the first episode and the last episode. I think he's still dealing with that injury he had. I don't think he's recovered. Because you can still tell in his scenes he's kind of always stationary or always already standing. And we've been talking about that for, like, three seasons. I believe he hurt his back or something. Like, really hurt his back. And he wasn't able to stand up for an entire season. And then he kind of left the show. And I think it's all tied to that. And you can tell by how much he's not on the show that that's still going on. Um, we do get rid of Keon. Uh, she turns into a goddess and ascends and she joins HG or Wells or whichever Wells is the one who came back and turned into a God of time travel. That one comes and takes her. 
I, I lost track of all the wells. Nash is the only fun one, and the other ones were just wells. So uh, I, I still think that would have been a fun gimmick to keep going. I really wish they didn't stop doing that. You know, having a new wells every season was just kind of fun. Um, but yeah, that was resolved. And when Keown left, she left the body of Caitlyn behind. Caitlyn came back for the very, very ending. We got Caitlyn back. Okay. Um, little sad we didn't get Killer Frost. Like, and if, if there was a, if there was an episode that I maybe missed where Killer Frost came back, I don't think there was because Keon kept talking as if Caitlyn and Killer Frost were both gone. So I don't think Killer Frost is back as far as I know, but we did get Caitlyn back. Um, if you think about it, the only OG characters that stayed with the show all nine seasons from beginning to end are Iris, Barry, Joe, and Caitlyn. I think. I'm pretty sure that's it. I don't think anyone else is left on the show at this point. So it was fun. Now the question of what happened to the Flash TV show. And this is actually interesting. So I've been doing a lot of research on people's opinions of the Flash. And I've literally heard everything from the Flash stopped being good after season one. The Flash stopped being good after season two. The Flash stopped being good after season three. The Flash stopped being good after season four. I saw nobody agreed on five and six. So we can just forget those existed apparently. <laughs> Some people enjoyed seven. Some people enjoyed eight. Uh, the show wasn't canceled because of lack of fandom. You got to think about this for a moment. Everyone's like, the show stopped being good at four. Well, people kept watching it. It's why it stayed around. And I've thought about this. What happened to The Flash, the show? What's the problem with it? Well, the first thing that went wrong with The Flash and the problem with it is the original creator and showrunner, Andrew Kaisenberg, who brought in a few other, I believe I pronounced his name wrong, Kreisberg, that's it. Um, they, the original people left the show running after season three. Uh, the show had gone through three speedsters at that point. Everyone was starting to complain that the speedsters were a problem. So they decided to bring in a new showrunner, which was Eric Wallace. He brought in the thinker season. You can tell post season three, the CW started to have budgetary problems. Now, I don't know if that's because they were launching too many superhero shows, if they, the reins were being tightened on how much money they had or what the situation was. But the problem is that the show, as the years went on, was obviously getting smaller and smaller budgets, and the writers kept changing out, as we know. Now, changing of the writers is also changing of the times, because I think people forget that this show was on the air for nine years. A show like this doesn't exist anymore. And when this came out and the Arrowverse came out, we didn't have things to compare it to. We didn't have big dramas like The Boys. We didn't have ongoing shows that everyone was addicted to like Game of Thrones. We didn't have shows on Disney Plus and things like that to compare it to. This was just television. This is what television was. You had the obscure thing come out like The Sopranos, but the day and age of what we have now, which is like, eight to 10 episode limited series with crazy budgets, crazy writing, all that stuff. It didn't exist really, not on the level that it exists now. It was an oddity and obscurity back in those days. So I think as the time went on with The Flash and the budget got tighter, they ran into two big issues. TV landscape was changing drastically. We were going away from the weekly episodic kind of a thing that's supposed to go 20 episodes. And we were going more towards things like you know, the, the shows we have now, big dramas, low episode count, high budgets, big stars. On top of that, The Flash ran into the problem that is The Flash. I'm a huge fan of The Flash. I love the character. But The Flash is a problem. His, his power is speed. That's it. The answer to every Flash problem is The Flash needs to go faster. How does he do it? Well, does he physically go faster? Maybe. He might go fast in his hand and go through the wall. He might go super fast in reverse time by like two seconds. Everything is he goes faster. That's all it ever is. Now, when you take a storyline for The Flash and you make it last 12 issues, and that spans an entire year, it's not as noticeable to us as the fans that this is all The Flash is doing is going faster. But when you try to make it into a 20-episode season or 24-episode season and every week the Flash is just going faster, yeah, it starts to wane on the plot. Seasons 1, 2, and 3, which a lot of people consider the best seasons, people drop off of Savitar. I still think the best season of all of them was just one. One had a great plot, great overall everything, and everything after that kind of started getting weaker and weaker as you're going. But it just turned into a situation of we've seen it, we've done it, we know what's going on. To counter that, 
the show started introducing more metahumans, more problems, more issues, which would then stress the budget even further. If you've just got the Flash and he's your only metahuman and he has to run, you can put the budget into the running to make it look good. But if you've now got, let's say season, I think it was seven, we have the Strength Force, the Sage Force. We've got, like, magical powers. cisco has got to do things. we got to do Killer Frost stuff. Mark is running around over here. Well, now the budget has to go to all of them. So we can't put it all into the Flash's running. Diehard fans like me would have been great if we just had Flash doing Flash things. I've said for a while, I feel like the season should have been condensed to 13 episodes. So you can just tell a tight Flash storyline. But they needed 24 episodes. They needed to stretch the budget out. They needed to keep making things more wilder and sprawling. He had to run faster, do more science fiction stuff, get more metahumans, and we didn't have the money for it. And I think that's the problem with The Flash. The Flash should have ended season five, season six. I'm not saying good things didn't happen. Blood work from season seven or eight, whichever one he was in, negative speed force, both great. I loved them both, okay? Flash getting lightsabers, look, we can rag on that all we want, but it was cool. Come on. Who doesn't want to, oh, we got lightning swords. Like, come on. We all ragged on it, but seriously, what else are they going to do? Run faster? That's my point. <laughs> I don't think The Flash is inherently bad. I think The Flash is a product of the era that it came out of and that it ran too long for its source material. Because what makes The Flash interesting is when he doesn't run faster, we go into crazy science fiction. We go time travel, we go multiverse, we go to alternate worlds, we go mess with things like that. And you can't do that with The Flash's budget when we're trying to introduce new metahumans and new characters. And you can't just keep telling the same story about Barry having problems with Iris which is why we got characters like Allegra and Chester and Cisco and Caitlin and Killer Frost and Mark. And I could probably keep going. I don't remember all their names at the top of my head, but hulking strength force lady. Ooh, spooky spooky sage force guy. And don't forget about Dion. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, I don't think The Flash is bad. I wouldn't have watched it for nine seasons if it was all terrible. But I do feel like at some point, a few of us, myself included, were only watching it to see how it was going to resolve. It wasn't amazing and incredible anymore. It was, yeah, I watched The Flash. It was okay. This part sucked. Why is Allegra there? Barry had a cool moment. And that's what it kind of turned into. And now it's over. This is the last of the serialized weekly Flash, Arrow, Stargirl television shows. And WB, CW, HBO, they all tried to move on. They tried to make Doom Patrol and Titans, but they just didn't do it right. I love the Titans, but they just didn't do it right. And now we're in a new era. We're in the DCU era, which is going to be Peacemaker quality shows. Because when you take things like Peacemaker and you compare it to The Flash, you're on totally different levels of storytelling, budget, casting, everything. It's just different levels. The Flash is like Peacemaker's little brother, but it's been around forever. Go watch, if you want to see like other things of the Flash's era, go watch things like Heroes. Go watch things like Lost. These are shows that should have ended way earlier than they did, and they just had to drag it out because you needed 22 to 24 episodes, and you didn't have an idea that would go that far. And that's why a lot of our classic shows that we loved so much don't hold up with the nostalgia. Anyway, I think I got my point across. But let me know what you guys think about The Flash. What was your favorite season? What, what did you like the most? And were you an Allegra fan? Because I'm still looking for you guys. <laughs> and you know what? While we're at it, let's just throw this in there. Any Dion fans out there? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for this week's The Problem With. Uh, I'm going to be watching Into the Spider-Verse, and that'll be next week's. I'm sure I can find something that we can all complain about and do it together. Also, I got to talk about the Spider-Man issue 26. Not going to spoil what happens here, but uh, yeah, it's coming out tomorrow. Well, we're filming this Tuesday. It comes out Wednesday when this goes out. It's out. Google it if you dare. See you guys next time. Thanks so much.